Sia's tech stocks have all fallen big time in the year 2022 due to two main reasons. Firstly, the COVID one-time boost is no longer effective. Right. Secondly, the rise in the interest rates mean that the cheap money is gone now. And the companies like C Limited as well as Grab Holdings cannot continue to borrow like there's no tomorrow to gain market share. In other words, they have to start controlling their expenses and also conduct retrenchments to start generating cash flow again. That being said, there are still many tech stocks out there that are growing at a fast pace and analysts are bullish on them. In this video, we're going to dive into 5 such undervalued tech stocks and talk about their financials, future growth, what I like and don't like about these companies. But before we begin, do subscribe to our channel and give us the thumbs up button. Right? In return, I will share with you a financial meme. Next up, let's take a look at the investing criteria we will be using to screen for the 5 undervalued tech stocks. I'm using this great stock analysis tool called Simply Wall Street. You can also check it out by clicking on the affiliate link below. First of all, the companies, the five companies have to belong to the SIAS or the tech stocks. For those who don't understand what SIAS is, SIAS stands for Software as a Service. SIAS applications are simply software applications. They are provided online rather than as desktop applications. For example, you pay a monthly fee for the Netflix subscription and Zoom video and use their services via the cloud. Next, we want to find out the tech stocks that have fallen more than 50% in the year 2022. Alright, so this will give us some kind of a reversal uh, play, you know, or a value, so to speak. Third, as many of the tech stocks are still loss making, we focus on what makes them attractive to investors in the first place, which is revenue growth. So we are looking at more than 20% for this criteria. The last criteria we have is the analyst target price. So given that quite a number of analysts are covering all these high growth stocks, right, due to their popularity, we simply just piggyback on their research and filter for the stocks that have a potential upside of over 30% based on the analyst one year target price. Okay, so after screening for all these criteria, I'm going to share with you these five stocks in the later part of this video. So do stick around to the end of the video. And if you want to know about other stocks, other tech stocks, do leave your comments below and let me know what you think about the current five stocks as well. So the first stock that we have is Monday.com. All right. Monday.com is a, a, a work software, right? They provide a workflow software. Uh, as opposed to those traditional work software where you have a rigid architecture, you have to download programs into your system, and then you have to adapt to multiple softwares and make all of them sync with each other. So you are like disconnected with uh, your different kind of uh, work tools and applications. And this is a big problem, especially after post-COVID, right? We all become more digitalized. We want everything to you know, work very smoothly. So Monday.com actually pioneered this new category of software called the Work OS. And just some characteristics, right, is that it is uh, flexible and adaptable, right? There's a no code building blocks, right? Basically, you can take like finance and you can combine with HR, you can combine with uh, maybe expense management, you can also combine with uh, the HR, you want to apply for leave, all these kind of things and bundle all of them together into one ecosystem. So one platform to run all aspects of work. And this is very powerful because it is creating a single unified workspace. All right. So this is a game changer for the kind of uh, uh, work, uh, digital work environment. Okay, now let's hop over to Simply Wall Street where we'll look at the stock and the financial performance. First of all, Monday.com, right? If we were to look at it, the one-year performance is down 60.8%. All right. 
as of uh, 30th December 2022. Now let's look at the, uh, right, uh, the, the other two criteria. The first one, which is the revenue growth, okay, where the analyst is projecting a 24.7% growth in the future, all right, versus 13% that of the software industry and 6.8% of the US market. The other one that we look at is the target price, okay, the one year target price, which is uh, over here, analyst target price. And if we were to zoom in to the date for today, okay, the average one year target price is around 150 US dollars. So that is a potential 24% upside. Okay, now let's look at the uh, past financial performance right over at this tab you can see a very nice chart over here now let's look at the free cash flow and revenue growth so the revenue growth has been spectacular right 78 million to 664 million in just three to four years time whereas uh, the free cash flow has been negative but there is a sign of turnaround uh, in the near future Okay, uh, on top of that, let's look at their financial health. So over here, we see that their financial position is all mainly uh, a lot of assets, all right? And uh, it is debt-free, all right? You can see that they have a lot of uh, cash, actually 852 million worth of cash, all right? And it's most importantly, Monday.com is debt-free. Okay, other than that, let's look at what I like and don't like about Monday.com. So I have uh, put in a few notes over here. All right, so what I like about this company is that based on G2, all right, it is a comparison table of all the different uh, like software tools and all that. So Monday.com has 4.7 stars out of 5 maximum stars. So that's a very high number. All right, higher than there are competitors like uh, Asana, okay, 4.3, Trello. Trello is a very popular one which I used to, uh, you know, use it in my previous company. So 4.4 star and Airtable, another popular one, 4.6. So Monday.com has the highest uh, stars here, okay? And uh, what I like is that because Monday.com is actually, uh, they have a, land, expand, and scale uh, business model where they will ask the customers to sign up for a particular product, but after which they will continually expand the product range. And that includes things like, uh, you know, they, going, they go from project management to CRM, sales, marketing, expense management, and all that. So all these, right, increase the TAM from 26 billion to 56 billion. All right, and like I said, it's operating close to free cash flow break even in the latest results, and it has tons of cash flow okay to grow by cross selling. It it doesn't have to be like other companies like Shopee, or you have to worry worry that uh, you run out of cash and you need to you know maybe lay off people and things like that. What I don't like about you know Monday.com is that it is a very crowded space in this project management software platform space. Okay, we, you have uh, peers like Salesforce and HubSpot because we are, if you are expanding your product range into like CRM, sales and all that, you are facing against very big competitors like Salesforce and HubSpot which already have an entrenched ecosystem. Okay, uh, the last thing is uh, it is still trading at around price to sales of 10 times still kind of pricey for me. Okay, so Cloudflare, all right, is a leading content delivery network, okay, short form CDN, which provides fast, secure access to millions of websites globally. In addition, okay, Cloudflare is a leader in the firewall and protection platform services, right, over uh, web applications like what you see over here. In the past, you have Hardware, software, you need to buy and install them, like Sysmatech, Cisco, and all that. So these are more like you buy the software, then you have to install in your computer. 
But in future, the network, okay, the the this uh cloud network allows you to rent all these services, and that's where Cloudflare comes into the the uh, this space, okay. And another thing I like, okay, about Cloudflare is that one of the very popular uh, anime website I regularly go and visit, okay, Cloudflare is actually the one powering the performance and security of this anime website. All right. Uh, and with over uh, 11,000 networks over the world, all right, they are data localization platform. It means... If you are based in Singapore, okay, you will connect to the Singapore's network, okay, the data center over there. If you are in the US, you will connect to the US network. So this is very localized and it, it is proving to be very popular with customers because of the speed, the security and all that. And organizations actually look to store their data locally. They don't want to, you know, Singapore, uh, maybe Singapore website, they don't want to store their data all the way into the US or Korea or Australia, they want to store it locally for regulatory reasons. And that's where Cloudflare, um, you know, uh, is well aligned with that. And also on top of that, we have privacy issues, geopolitical pressure, all right, among all the different countries. So Cloudflare is a, a global network powerhouse over here. Okay, now let's jump back into the... Um, the Simply Wall Street, right? Where we will look at the financial performance as well. So same thing, uh, let's look at their revenue growth. Okay, 27% for the next one year versus industry 10%. Okay, and looking at the analyst target price uh, over here. All right. So one year target price is at $61, so that is around 36% potential upside. Now let's jump to the past financial performance. You can look at the revenue growth, all right? The revenue growth, the blue color line over here, it has been also very impressive, growing from um, 84 million in 2016 to 894 million, that's around 10 times, right? 10 times uh, uh, jump in the revenue in just a short uh, seven years, all right? Although it is currently still free cash flow negative, all right? Um, yeah, so the, the earnings and the free cash flow is still negative. So that is something that we, we as investors may need to take note of. Okay, now let's look at their financial health. All right. So I like to look at this uh, debt to equity chart. Okay. Okay. So from here we can see that their debt to equity ratio is very high, two hundred and forty-one percent. But that said, right, they have a cash and equivalent of one point six billion. So you know the cash can actually cover the whole debt itself. So that is not to not too worrisome, lah, Okay. If you were to look at it uh, in this angle. Okay, and uh, then let's look at the notes. Okay, my notes. What I like about Cloudflare is, is that it has 156,000 paying customers. That's a huge chunk, right? Other companies can only talk about that. Maybe they have uh, five digits, but Cloudflare is talking about six digits worth of paying customers, all right? And on top of that, they have this integrated platform, right? That it offers performance plus security to leverage on this ongoing digitalization. What this means is that a lot of uh, <clears throat> companies, they tend to operate uh, on-premise. That means they uh, maybe connect to the local network and all that, but they, they want to digitalize their business. They have to find a platform that offers them Performance and security, and Cloudflare is the one that you know can offer this kind of a basic uh, springboard, lah, right? And it has also the scale. Okay, their cloud network is localized over the globe, and 
what I like, okay, at the last point is that the website which I used to watch anime, so this is like a, you know, at least it's tangible. I can see that, you know, there are customers using Cloudflare service. Okay. And what I don't like about Cloudflare is that it is effectively competing against both the CDN, the content delivery network, and the security peers. Security peers, you have like those very popular ones like CloudStrike, you know, like uh, like uh, Palaloto, okay, and that kind of thing. So they are more specialized, okay? So Cloudflare is a more broad-based offering. And then it's also expensive at a 15 times price to sales. And there's no signs of profits turn around yet. Okay, so that's all for Cloudflare. Okay, the third stock on our list is Palantir. Okay, Palantir is a global leader in the AI and the machine learning platforms with significant market share from both the government and the commercial market. In fact, IDC ranked them as the number one in this uh, worldwide AI software. Okay, by market share as well as revenue. And Forrester also named them as a leader in the AI and ML platforms. Okay, so uh, Palantir specialized in big data analytics and built the digital infrastructure for all those uh, data-driven operations and decision-making. This is a case study of how they have helped this client, this Tyson Foods, Okay, save over 200 million in cost savings through the data transformation. And if you were to look at it, okay, they have two main products, right? So Gotham focus on the government sector, whereas Foundry focus on the commercial clients. And as of the third quarter 2022, the government revenue contributes around 60% of the total revenue. So now, let's uh, jump into the Simply Wall Street where we look at their financials. So Palantir, right? Okay, so first of all, let's look at their, right, their future growth, their annual revenue growth. So it's expected to grow at 20.7%, still very much higher than the 13% uh, percent coming from the software industry. And now if we go to the analyst target price, okay, the 12th month forecast, the average price target is around $9.13. So that is a potential upside of 42% given by the analyst. Looking at the past financial performance, all right. So typically when you see all these tech stocks, right, all their revenue should be going up, okay year-on-year -year basis. But what we also want to look at is whether they are generating free cash flow because that free cash flow is the one that will help to, um, you know, pump, they, they are able to use that to pump more into R&D, pay salaries and everything. So for Palantir itself, right, they are currently um, free cash flow positive. So we will need to monitor, right, in the next one year or two years to see whether the free cash flow can continue to grow uh, going forward. And next, okay, looking at the financial health is very important for uh, CR stocks. So in this aspect, right, Palantir is doing very well, six over six for the financial health score. Okay, if you look at the, they also have a 0% debt to equity ratio. Okay, so it's debt free. And they have two point around two point four seven billion in cash and equivalents. It's already more than the debt, uh, more than the equity itself. So that shows that uh, Palantir is in a very healthy financial position. So with that, let's look at the uh, notes that I've prepared. All right. Okay. What I like about Palantir is they have this, you know, this uh technological advantage of their top grade AI ML platform. Okay. And next, although they came out, you know, uh, when they were listed, right, they are focusing a lot on the US government uh, because they get a bulk of their contracts over there. It is aggressively targeting non-US 
commercial business for growth. So you know that Palantir is very big in US, but they are aggressively hiring salespeople to target non-US going forward. All right. And the current market share of uh, what they predict is the total addressable market is a total of $119 billion. Commercial is 56 and government is 63. So right now, they only have a current market share of 2%. So that it represents a long runway for growth. But on the other hand, I also don't like a few things. So first of all, although it is targeting non-US commercial business, it is facing difficulties in selling this uh, foundry platform. Okay, uh, the results were wouldn't as uh, favorable as expected. And if you were to look at the stock-based compensation, so this company gives a lot of... Uh, maybe stock options or the, the shares to the cl uh, to the CEO as well as the employees. And a lot of um, investors have complained that they are giving too generous a package and that is leading to negative free cash flow uh, over the years, over the past few years. All right, so um, this, okay, this is a point to take note to see that they at least have it in control. That means they don't just keep giving up, uh, you know, stock-based compensation uh, when the economy is not doing well. And last point is a very important point, all right? Although Palantir has signed a lot of contracts over the past two years, these contracts can be cancelled and they are facing a very high risk of the cancellation due to the looming recession. And if you, if you were to imagine, right, let's say uh, maybe Coca-Cola or some other F&B company, they think that, oh, um, going forward, I may have trouble even, uh, you know, uh, making profits or making increased growth uh, for, my, for my own products and all that. I wouldn't want to spend a huge chunk of that to sort of uh, do some big data analytics. So this portion will have to wait until the recession gets better. So this is a key risk for Palantir. Okay, right now let's go back to the fourth stock, which is Datadog, right? Okay, so Datadog is a monitoring and analytics platform for developers, IT ops team, and even business users. Okay, engage in all these cloud applications. And why Datadog has uh, really taken off in the past two years is because as more and more people, you know, go from um, maybe on-premise to the digital world, the, the cloud-based uh, kind of uh, world, they are putting in a lot of different applications. And they are, there's no... Uh, a very good platform to monitor and analyze all this data coming in. And Datadog is looking to change everything here. So they are like the leading monitoring and analytics platform for all these different parties to monitor and use the data for their own good. Okay, and from this image itself, right, it sort of says everything whereby, you know, there are a lot of uh, different uh, different silos that come together, such as incident management, cloud security, um, shared features such as uh, dashboards, collaboration tools, workflow and all that. And Datadog create this unified okay, platform where you can deploy anywhere and be used by everyone. So they are combining all these together which makes life a bit more, you know, much more better for all the people using all these cloud applications. All right, and let's jump back to the Simply Wall Street, right, where we look at the financials. So, okay, see, Datadog is also fallen uh, by more than uh, 58% over the past year. But, okay... Analysts are targeting a 26% increase in 
annual growth going forward. So that is a very high number, almost double of the debt of the industry, right? And okay, you can see that the share price has fallen by a lot. Okay, and if you were to look at the average price target, it is coming at 110 US dollars. So that represents almost a 50% potential upside. All right. Going to the financial performance, the past financial performance, we can see that the revenue has been spectacular from 100 million, okay, in 2017 to 1.5 billion. All right, that is a 15 times jump in, I think, in four years, right? And you can see that they are the only one, right, so far that we have covered, right, the, the four, the three stocks that we covered before. Right now, Datadog is the only one that shows a very clear trend that free cash flow is growing together with the top line as well. And if we were to look at the financial health, all right. Okay, we can see that they have a 57% debt to equity ratio. However, if you were to incorporate the cash and equivalents of 1.7 billion, okay, in cash, that is already much higher or 1 billion higher than the debt they have of uh, 738 million. So not to worry, and uh, data debt, uh, data doc do have a strong financial position as well. All right, more cash than the total debt. Okay. So let's look at what I like and don't like about this company. Okay, I have a lot of things to like about Datadog, to be honest. Okay, so first of all, um, they are right now at 1.5 billion revenue, but it is still growing at more than 70% uh, trailing 12 months. So what this means is that as compared to other tech stocks, right, who are, you know, maybe at you know, 100 million, a few hundred million, Datadog is at a five point a one point five billion revenue, but it is still able to grow at such a fast pace compared to the other tech stocks. So this warrants a second look at this company. Next, there's a strong retention rate of one hundred and thirty percent. What this means is that people are staying with the uh staying with the platform, all right, using their products, and continue to pay more for the subscription services. Okay, this brings us to the point number three, where there's a upsell and cross-sell wonders. That means if you were to look at their, you know, the presentation, the corporate presentation, which I will share with the, which I will share in the comments down below, right? 80% of their customers use two products of Datadog and it is growing you know, uh, a, a lot more people now are using multiple products where 16% of them actually use six products in total. So that is a very, um, you know, when you talk about stickiness, people who are already using uh, six products, they wouldn't want to change to another uh, platform just because of maybe some cost savings and things like that. So if you are using, you know, six products in a whole ecosystem and have them link up together and things like that, chances are you will continue to stick to the platform and continue to explore what can be, uh, you know, what can make your life a better one, what can help to make your work uh, simpler and more efficient, right? And most importantly, right, I like this uh, free cash flow margin coming in at 24%. So that means out of uh, maybe $100, right, of revenue, $24 is actually coming in as free cash flow. And this free cash flow can be used for multiple purposes, you know, like, uh, you know, going into different markets, uh, hiring more staff to sell the products and things like that. So on the other side, all right, what I don't like about Datadog is that the poor economy may put a damper on the rapid growth that is currently, uh, you know, where Datadog is having. 
Okay, and they have also strong competitors. The most, uh, you know, the most relatable peer is Dana, uh, Dyna Trace. Okay, you can go and uh, research about Dyna Trace. It is a very similar um, company compared to Datadog. Okay, so our last talk on our list is Unity Software. Okay, Unity Software, when you look at it, um, they are the world's leading platform for the creating and operating of real-time 3D content. If you were to look at the two images over here, right? So the first one is that they are strengthening their game's business through better tools and features. And some notable games include like the Disney Mirrorverse, Subway Surfers, which I played when I was quite young. Lah. All right. And the recent Marvel Snap game all right, has taken the world by storm. And I myself personally, I'm playing Marvel Snap. And I do think that it is a very nice game. Um, takes a lot of strategy and also com a, a combination of both strategy as well as real time. And also the, the very nice graphic effects. All putting inside uh, this game called Marvel Snap. You can go and uh, download and have a go at it. Okay. On the other hand, um, Unity Software is also branching out okay, to businesses outside of games. So they are partnering companies like um, like you know, Mercedes-Benz right, to help in their uh, in-car entertainment and all that. Right. So let's jump into the Simply Wall Street again to look at their financials. Okay. So one year, Unity has been down 80%. That's a very sharp fall um, in just a one single year, right? All right. Okay, but analysts are still thinking that Unity Software can grow at 25%. Okay, 25% uh, in the next year. That is a pretty impressive growth if you to think about it. Because uh, now that a lot of people may be going back to the work, uh, going back to studies, they may not have so much time to play games, right? But they still think that, all right, Unity Software can grow 25%. And uh, if you were to look at the analyst price target, right? Okay, right now it is trading at $28. Analysts predict that it can go up to $36.8. So that represents almost a 30% potential upside. Okay, and uh, financial performance. So that is a uh, quite a worrisome trend if you were to look at it. Unity, Unity, right? Although their revenue is growing, but it's kind of stalling as well, like reaching a peak, and starting the the steepness is starting to fall, but the earnings is also, uh, the losses are also accelerating downwards over the years. And if you were to look at free cash flow, it is also fluctuating. And there's no clear sign that it is going to be free cash flow positive going forward. So we do need to take note of uh, you know, their future plans, whether they will um, increase the prices such that, uh, or, or cut the expenses such that you know, the company can become free cash flow positive. And since it is uh, free cash flow negative, it is important to look at the debt to equity ratio. <clears throat> so right here we have 77% debt to equity ratio, which is slightly on the high side, if you were to ask me. All right. However, okay, they do also have a cash and equivalence of 1.6 billion, very close to that of the debt. So I would think that they are still you know, uh, in a stable, um, you know, uh, financial position, okay, uh, satisfactory, okay, net debt to equity ratio. However, we do need to monitor and see how things are going forward. Okay, so now let's move on to the last part, which is my notes. All right, what I like about Unity Software is that they make over 50% of the worst games. So that includes Pokemon Go, 
Marvel Snap, which I previously talked about, and Jurassic World Alive. So, uh, over 50%, you can say that they do have a, a very strong uh, economic mode, all right? They have to have a technological edge in order for so many developers to go to them and make all these games, right? And on top of that, in addition, right, they acquired Iron Source. Iron Source is a mobile app monetization platform connecting both the apps, all right, and the advertisers. If you think about it, uh, for the app developers, all right, the companies, they would usually want, you know, advertisers to advertise on their apps so that they can get the revenue flowing. And Iron Source is like um, in the middle, right? They help to bridge the gap as the monetization platform. So this gel well with what uh, Unity is, you know, doing so far, creating all the very popular games. And this Iron Source can maybe add as a upsell or cross-sell to connect the game developers as well as the advertisers who, which have all the moolah out there. Third point is that the Unity is winning customers outside of gaming. If you think about it, Mercedes-Benz and Unity, right, is working on those kind of a next generation user interaction like maps, avatars, AI concierge and more. Okay. Last point, okay, what I don't like is that uh, Epic Games or Unreal Engine is a tough peer for Unity software. So out of this uh, 50% of the world games, another 50% can be said to be powered by Unreal Engine. Um, one of the very popular games include Fortnite. Okay, I think you would have probably heard of Fortnite. It is created by Unreal Engine, which is a, a competitor of Unity software. Next, uh, given that you know there's a recession fear, the whole app uh, or advertisement sector may be struggling going forward. And this is a, uh, you know, this may be a short term um, bad effect for Unity software, given that if no uh, less people want to develop games and also less advertisers want to spend a lot of money to you know, on all these uh, mobile apps. These five stocks are five stocks that have fallen over 50%, revenue growth more than 20%, price target more than 30% upside. The first stock we have is Monday.com. It is a uh, focus on the workflow operating uh, system. The next one is Cloudflare, top renter platform. It means instead of, uh, you know, you buying all those data storage in the office, you can just connect to Cloudflare and they can power your performance and security and things like that. Third is Palantir. So Palantir is focused on data analytics. If you think about it, there's a lot of data flowing everywhere. So Palantir will help you to build something that's customized to your own business, help you to analyze and how to um, save on all these maybe um, processes to lead to cost savings. All right, so Datadog, Datadog is uh, what we call a unified cloud monitoring platform, okay? So they have all these cloud applications and they help you to create a dashboard and uh, monitor all these cloud applications at one go. Last but not least, we have Unity software. It is focused on real-time 3D content. And it is, it helps, you know, all these developers use using their software to create all this real time content. Once, you know, you start to create the content, you will be definitely sticking with the software. It doesn't make sense for you to create a game halfway and then to, you know, um, pluck off and then go to another competitor. All right. So these are the five undervalued tech stocks. Thanks for watching our video, right? We hope that you have enjoyed it. What other stocks do you want us to analyze? You can let us know by leaving a comment below. By the way, I will also leave the corporate presentation URL links below, right? So do feel free to do more research on these five stocks yourself. 
And if you want more tips and advice on how to invest for the better, be sure to like my video and subscribe to my channel. Next up, if you want to know how to navigate today's era of higher interest rates, make sure to watch this video over here. Alright, I'll see you next time.